If you're getting sticker shock at the supermarket, don't blame the farmer. Every supply chain has been disrupted, and one of the big reasons is help wanted truck drivers. With an average age of 55, the workforce was already thinning out pre-pandemic. Then many drivers retired and driving schools shut down. The American Trucking Association says there are 60,000 openings right now. Weather is always a wild card on the USA's Great Plains and in the Southwest. Corn is expensive everywhere now, soybeans too. And we are shopping in a global marketplace. Farm exports are near an all time high. China is our number one customer. Farmers are spending more on feed and fertilizer, and like the trucking industry, they're competing for labor. How all this impacts your shopping list? Let's ask Doug Steffen, who hosts the American Family Farmer radio show, heard on stations across the USA each weekend, and it's a podcast wherever you get yours. And Doug was on one of the very first shows I did almost four years ago when I first came to RT America, and back then, this trucker's issue was already an issue. And Doug came up with the elegant solution to all this when he told us, don't eat anything that has to be delivered on a truck. Now, admittedly, during the pandemic shutdown, delivery has been a convenience. But, Doug, make the pitch. Tell us all the reasons why we should buy from farmers markets and directly from growers. I don't think I have to. I think the answer is in the question. The question isn't why. The question, I guess, is how as much as anything else. The important thing is to understand what the difference is in the food that you're getting from the local farmer and what you're getting in the grocery store. Uh, the farmers, farmers markets, that sort of thing. Anything local is always, always, always going to be better than whatever you can get from something that was trucked in from California. It may look good or it comes up from Florida or wherever it comes from. It may look fabulous because they spray it with water and they color it with you know the oranges that you uh, that you see picked down in Florida they aren't orange <laughs> they aren't orange <laughs> until somebody hits them with a with a spray gun and the same with most of the apples that you get that come from Washington it's just a whole different ball game it's all sex and sell you know how that works Holland it's advertising well, it's the stuff that we make a living doing in fact uh, but that doesn't mean that it's helping us to get better food it may look better it may even taste better, but that doesn't mean that it's better for you. Uh, even that time on the truck, the food that comes off the truck is nutritionally less than what went on the truck, right? Well, if you figure what happens, the, the value of the, of the food is obviously the composition that comes from the proteins and the nutrients that are in it. But there also is sugar in it, and the sugar helps it to keep its flavor. Over the course of a three-day trip, let's say, from California to New York or Boston, it loses about 60% of the value, and it also because the sugar comes out. I guess the best example might be corn. If you go to the grocery store right now and buy corn that was grown in Florida, and you can find it all over the place, and you peel it, you husk it, you put it in the water, you cook it, maybe put a little milk in it, some salt, and you taste it, then wait a month and taste the stuff that's being grown on your local farm. It's like night and day. It's like it comes from a different world because all the nutrients, the sugars, the starches, all the things that are in there are gone for the most part. So what you're eating is like eating paper. It's the, I equate it to newspaper. Maybe the re reading the newspaper is not as good as eating it, uh, but that's kind of the equivalency. And when you buy from the farmer, the farmer gets to keep the money. How many cents on the dollar does the farmer get yeah. from something you Never buy in me. a big supermarket? You don't get me started on this. I had a chart. I should have brought it to hold up for the camera. Uh, the average, if you spend $10, and I'll best, um, I was up uh, in upstate New York the other day picking up cows for my farm. And I was talking to an Amish guy. Uh, who has, he's part of a cloistered group in central New York, uh, dairy farmers, Jersey cows, fabulous operation, wonderful people. And, you know, he was telling me about what he used to get uh, from the, what they call the pool in the dairy. The government regulates most of the milk. And that's why the big outfits that, that have thousands of cars, they're not farms, uh, they're factories. They have thousands and thousands of cows. 
So the stuff that comes out of them is nowhere near the quality. And the people who are going to the farms recognize that. They know at the supermarket, they'll pay more and get less. So you go to the farm, you may pay the same, but you're getting something that's fresh. It's today's milk. And it hasn't been stickered, I'm sorry, it hasn't been socked uh, by microwaves, lasers, things that save the milk from hurting you, but it doesn't help you. There's no nutrition left, no flavor. It's like white water. And that's the story all over the place. Whereas if you buy milk from this Amish guy, you're getting something that really, really helps your body. And after all, isn't that why I know we eat because we like to eat, but we really, uh, in terms of our natural instincts, we're eating because we have to keep our body strong. Definite uh, quality quantity trade off. Doug, why is milk so expensive now? Well, it really isn't. Who said it was expensive? Where'd you get that? <laughs> is it not? <laughs> yeah. No. I, you know, I think I told you this once before, and you've been to my farm. Um, I was selling raw milk on the farm. I'm a, I have a dairy in Framingham, Massachusetts, which is outside of Boston. And we were selling a gallon of milk for $12. It was raw milk. And we'd sell 100 gallons plus a day. And I could sell twice that if I was able to produce it. Had about 100 cows that we were milking. And the people would come and stand in line while we would actually watch us process it. Because it comes out of the cow, it goes into the tank, it gets chilled to 34 degrees in four minutes, and then you put it into the bottles, put the cap on it, people take it away. And that's about as fresh as you could get. And it's worth 12 bucks to the people who understand what the nutritional value of it is. So when you complain about a $4.69 gallon of milk, what you should be complaining about isn't the price of it, but the quality of it, because you're buying actually $4.69 worth of white water. So, you know, if you, unless you get whole milk, and then maybe you got some value to it. But if it's been pasteurized, neutralized, if you will, by the big processors, and then you're not getting what you would get if you went to a small local dairy that pasteurizes the milk or sells it raw. But when they pasteurize it, they use a vat that's about maybe 100 gallons. They heat it a slow burn, and they just get it to a temperature where it'll burn, where it will kill the bacteria. Uh, and then the rest of it isn't, you know, affected by uh, anything other than the value of the milk comes out of the cow. We've been reading about uh, feed prices going up. Are you caught in a pinch? Is it more expensive to feed your girls lately? No, well, I don't. Uh, at this time of year, I pasture most of my cows. I have 89 acres of pasture, so I I've got about 40 some odd uh, heifers that I'm raising uh, at the time, and I, that's all past. I don't give them anything. Um, the feed cost, though, for people who have a rationing uh, barn that don't let the cows out, that keep the cows in. I was in a, another farm the other day that has robotic milkers. Uh, they, it's really it's the first time I've ever <laughs> seen them work. Uh, it's a, a, a beautiful place. The cows are fabulous. And the milk that's coming out of these cows is second to none. Uh, they use a robot. They keep things clean with a robot. The milking is done with a robot. Uh, the cows milk themselves basically when they want to. They eat when they want to. They have a, a mixture of grain. But he and I were talking about how he's getting off of grain because, A, it's so expensive, and, B, it's really not good for their hooves. It's not good for the cows for their longevity. So you, the better, you know, if you've got organic gas, uh, I guess, organic grass and feed, uh, then the cows are going to give you what they're absorbing. It's they are what they eat, uh, and so uh, under the circumstances, what is expensive, though, to sort of get back to that, is the fact that the stuff has to be delivered to people. That costs money. I was working. I'll take another example. I'm I'm loading a truck at my farm right now. The guys are to go to an auction. And the I'm going to, the, the auction house is about 140 miles from here. They're charging me $1,500 to move five pieces of equipment about 180 miles. Uh, the last time I had a truckload moved, it was $950. And I said to the trucker, what's, you know, I mean, I know what's going on. He says, everybody is now, uh, uh, the, the Americans who were driving trucks who are of age are at home collecting. The government has made it so easy, and that's the same thing you were alluding to the help on the farm. You can't get help because everybody's sitting at home. Uh, you know, it's easier to make 
you make about the same amount of money sitting there. I mean, how silly, what kind of thinking goes into this sort of process where you give people money? Granted, I know a lot of people needed it during the pandemic, but right now you can't go up and down the streets in Washington, Providence, Boston, Framingham, and not see help wanted signs everywhere, no matter what the business is. Oh, yeah. This was a lifeline, you know, during the pandemic. But I fear that it's making us lazy now. The help wanted sign yeah. is everywhere. I'm trying to get my car in for service. They said they got two technicians left. Hey, we're out of time. Right. Doug Steffen, the American Family Farmer radio show and podcast, and the DJV show weekday mornings on a couple of hundred radio stations. Thank you once again for stepping into the big picture.